Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We are here in The Hague in the Netherlands at the SDN NFE World Congress 2017 and I'm talking with Bruno Chatras who is the Vice Chair of the ETSI NFV ISG. Bruno, good to see you again. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let's begin like this. It's five years now since the first NFE white paper was published. In your view, where are we in terms of the viability of the technology and the adoption of it by CSPs? Well, I think that the viability has been demonstrated. There is no, no real doubt about this. Uh, in terms of adoption, I would say that uh, we are this year we are clearly uh, at a time where we can see uh, the first large scale deployments. Uh, so it will require two or three more years probably to, to see a, a huge number of uh, large scale deployments. But uh, to me, this is a quite n natural process when you are facing a new technology, all the more that NFV is not just a technology transformation, there are business implications. Um, also, uh, this has an impact on operational processes, so it's not a surprise that we don't see immediately 1,000 large-scale deployments. Do you think anything can be done to speed the process up, or is it necessary to speed the process up? I don't think it is necessary to speed the process, but on the other end, I think that it, indeed, uh, it, if we want to uh, accelerate a bit, uh, not necessarily, uh, we, I don't think we need a huge acceleration, but if we want to accelerate a bit, what, what we need is surely, uh, this is well known, uh, so, some progress on interoperability between the VNFs and the infrastructure, between the VNF and uh, the VNFs and the management systems. Uh, we need m the availability of uh, tools, management tools, uh, testing tools and so on to enable true uh, automation, full automation. So Without that, uh, it's a bit difficult to uh, consider uh, uh, deploying uh, thousands of uh, new services. And, uh, and anyway, it, on the top of that, I think CSPs, they, they need to, uh, to digest the, uh, the lessons they, they learned from the first uh, real deployments. And they, they need to get some confidence in the technology. They need to make sure that they master the security implications and so on. So, well, it takes a bit of time. You mentioned um, CSPs. Ultimately, this transformation journey is all about CSPs being able to deliver a better customer experience. How are SDN and NFE going to help to gain the best possible insight into the current and future needs of customers, do you think? SDN and NAV, they are basically uh, tools to uh, help, help us to, to help the, the CSPs in general to, to deploy uh, networks in a flexible way, to be able to quickly adapt to the user demand, especially on the enterprise market. So, well, this is their, their the prime benefit, so they, they, this is the, even the, the, the main justification for these technologies to exist. So. Okay, what else do you think needs to change to ensure that you can provide customers with the best possible experience? We're going through this massive transformation anyway. Is there anything else that needs to change at the same time? Uh, as I said before, there are a couple of aspects on which we need to make some progress, uh, interoperability being one of them. Uh, and apart from these technological aspects, uh, I believe everyone understands that this is not just a technical transformation. So uh, all, these, uh, all organizations, not only the CSPs actually, but also the, the vendors themselves, but they need to reorganize their uh, development, testing, operational processes to, to take the full benefits of NFV. And we, but this is ongo ongoing, I think. We, 
people are learning uh, progressively uh, each time they deploy something. Part uh, of the entire process. Yeah. We're hearing a lot, Bruno, at the moment about automation, about machine learning, about data lakes and everything else. What, do this, what does that mean, what do they mean in the context of network transformation? How important do you think they're going to be in completing the journey or getting the journey completed? Well, automation, as I mentioned at the very beginning, is, I think, uh, of... Uh, it's a crucial, a crucial point because the uh, NFV and SDN, uh, in some way, they bring a lot of complexity that was uh, hidden before. And so without automation, it's very hard to, to master the complexity. Uh, uh, the NFV uh, management and orchestration function, they already provide uh, uh, an answer for automating everything related to managing resources, the virtual resources over which the VNFs are running. But uh, obviously this is not enough because uh, you, you, nothing has changed in that, okay, you have automated the creation of your virtual network function, but then you still need to manage the the application that is inside the VNF, or I will even say the, the distributed application that is running in a collection of VNFs. And this, is, this needs to be automated. NFV management and orchestration functions are not intended to, to help you to do that, so there is a, clearly a need for an additional layer of orchestration that is uh, aware of uh, application semantics. And this is why we see so many initiatives around that. I mean, we see op most open source projects working on NFV have added some sort of extra layer on top of NFV Mano. Uh, well, we have seen this week a proposal for a new ISG in Etsy focusing on uh, zero touch uh, orchestration, uh, zero touch uh, service management which is precisely about that. So I think the industry is well aware that we need this extra layer. NFV Mano is, does not answer everything. The only concern we could have for the time being is that there are many initiatives. Whether they will converge or not is still uh, an open question. So Bruno, over this five-year journey we've been, we've been on, what surprised you most about it so far? Well, actually, what has surprised me is that uh, something that was almost unknown in, in the beginning of 2012 as is now uh, a topic that you cannot avoid in any uh, conference related to telecommunications. You cannot avoid in any discussion between operators and vendors. So it was, I was quite surprised. I, at the very beginning, I was mm, a bit skeptical and then I when I saw that uh, this was now the most discussed topic, I was a bit surprised, yes. Thank you. If you could borrow the television, telecom TV time machine and change one thing over the past five years relating to NFV and SDM, what would it be? I think, uh, well, speaking as an HC uh, NFV vice chair, <laughs> uh, what I would have changed is probably that I think we should have started specifying uh, APIs, protocols, data models sooner because we spent a lot of time specifying uh, information models, uh, functional requirements, etc. And so during this time, a lot of uh, variants have been, incompatible variants have been de developed based on these principles. Yeah. Then we started to develop uh, true uh, API and data mo model specifications, but perhaps a bit too late because now it's difficult to convince the industry to converge towards the, the APIs uh, and the data models. So I would have started this work before <laughs> if I had been aware of that. Yeah. And a final question, your prediction for the next five years, Bruno? 
I think, uh, well, the easy prediction is that there will be more and more large-scale deployments of NFV for sure. Um, whether the NFV uh, technology will be exactly as it is today in five years, not sure. Especially because one of the main use cases will probably be 5G. And the particularity of 5G is that this will be the first time that network functions are designed with uh, virtualization in mind. And so um, this will probably uh, lead to uh, making some changes in the virtualization technologies themselves. So, so well, for example, uh, it's pretty clear that there will be more and more technologies based on containers rather than virtual machines, but this is just the easy part of the discussion. So, in short, the, yeah, the technology might be, NLV will be there, but perhaps a different flavor. Then, uh, as I just said, uh, five years ago, nobody was talking about NLV. So perhaps uh, what will happen in f with five years later, we don't know. Something probably around artificial intelligence will pop up, but, uh, well, I have no crystal ball, so... <laughs> Bruno Jatras, as usual, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you.